very much. My name is Mike Kroll. I'm responsible for international uh, security operations uh, here at the United Nations. Um, thank you for your introductory speech, which I found uh, inspirational on many levels. Little nagging doubt. And here at the UN, we're in the business of promoting peace, um, teaching people to live together, teaching communities to live together, to avoid the breaking of nations. Now, you come from a prosperous, liberal, secular democracy that enjoys the rule of law, that enjoys human rights. And I'm just wondering how being a good global citizen is compatible with your desire to break a 300-year-old union. You know, this is the United Nations, and your mission appears to be the breaking of nations. Okay, um, Mike, thank you for that um non-controversial question uh, which I, I always appreciate look my, my mission is not to break anything you know Scotland is a nation is a, a recognised nation for 300 years we have been in a union uh, with uh, other parts of, of the United Kingdom I, I want Scotland to be independent not from any insular or separatist motivation but because I believe that countries should govern themselves but also, and this is perhaps what sets uh, the, the movement that I'm part of, aside from other movements that in other parts of the world that often we are wrongly compared with, one of the reasons I want Scotland to be self-governing is so that we can play a positive, uh, powerful, uh, bigger role in, in the world in, a, in an entirely progressive uh, way. And, you know, if Scotland becomes an independent country in the future, uh, you know, our relationships with the rest of the British Isles, Scotland will still be a part of the British Isles cooperating. I, you know, take part uh, as First Minister of Scotland in the British Irish Council set up as part of the Irish peace process. Um, and around that table, we have two independent countries, three devolved administrations, the Crown dependencies. If Scotland becomes an independent country, we don't leave that table. We simply change the composition to being three independent countries and two devolved administrations still cooperating together. Uh, hopefully an independent Scotland would still also uh, play its part uh, in Europe in a, a constructive uh, and, and full way. But also, as I hope we're demonstrating, uh, even before we're an independent country, play that positive part uh, in the world. And, you know, actually, I, I think that the Scottish example here and you know, I'm not suggesting Scotland is unique in this sense in terms of being an independence movement, but it is unusual. And I actually think it sets a really positive example to the world. Uh, the campaign for Scottish independence, which has existed for much, much longer than my lifetime, uh, has you know, got to where it is just now through a referendum, a, a vigorously fought referendum campaign, without a single drop of blood being shed. It is an entirely peaceful and progressive movement. And actually, I think that is an example uh, to set to the world in terms of how constitutional differences can be debated and settled in an entirely peaceful way. So I am a nationalist, uh, not in the sense that is often ascribed to the word nationalist, uh, I want, uh, I believe in countries governing themselves to make the best of what they've got, but also so that they can be better internationalists uh, as a result. And I suppose in the United Kingdom context just now, one of the things that is the biggest risk to Scotland's internationalism is a Brexit process that we don't want to be part of. And, and therefore, the ability, uh, if the ability to, to continue to play a part in the world is enhanced by being an independent country, then I would think that actually speaks to the values that you, you, you refer to rather than in any way being, being counter to them.